Dolphins and Minish's Papers, it's time again for another Trash the Treasure, and this time we're going to build up Murder Fang! Alrighty, so time. Welcome back. Time to take this old dread that I got up from a deal from actually Ian, who is selling up. Uh, I think it's from Battle of Black Reach or something like that. Some kind of box set, but no, we're not going to need these arms right here. We're going to make up some Murder Fang. And I have the extra bits because I built Bjorn uh, and I did a painting story on Bjorn. You can catch it up here if you're interested in painting up, uh, watching how I painted up Bjorn step by step. Um, but I did have all these pieces and I thought that was such a waste to have all these pieces and not be able to build up, you know, Murder Fang or a Dread, something, you know? And it was kind of hard because I built the Primaris Dread and, oh man, that was difficult. And talking about difficult, this base is a tremendously difficult to get through. Ian, you did quite a job keeping this thing in. Rage quit. No, I'm kidding. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I did rage quit. I keep moving forward. All right, so we have these panels here, and what you gotta do is you gotta, you know, dry fit them. You gotta see that this piece is gonna need to come off. So I'm gonna clip these pieces off. And, you know, this is the nerve wracking piece for me. Like, I don't know, it's, it's something about hacking into a perfectly fine mini and just making it your own that's to me is a little nerve wracking. But I got over it because, you know, hey. It's all about the conversion when it comes to trash the treasure, right? It's all about making stuff that other people didn't want and making it into something that you can definitely use and not only use but show off, you know, kind of like bring it to the game night and watch uh, watch people say, "Wow, that's that's kind of cool," you know. <laughs> that's what it's all about for me, anyway. So I am going to take out uh, a lot of dangerous measures like cutting with dull blades, you know towards my actual thumb and other fingers. I'm gonna do that often. I don't recommend you do this to yourself. I mean, you know, don't go try this at home, kids. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty reckless sometimes. As you can see, sometimes I'm just reckless. And sometimes I get injured because of my recklessness, which if you are squeamish, I do have to say, if you are squeamish, I do cut into my finger at some point <laughs> in this video. If that might be something you kind of want to watch. So there you go, it's an Easter egg. And uh, no, I don't stop working. I just keep <laughs> I just keep going. So if you're squeamish, please um, don't watch it through the end. I don't want you to get sick or anything. But if you're if that's your, kind of your thing, so you get to see something coming up. So what you want to do is uh, you want to make this area flat right here because of the uh, storm fang uh, imprints. It's not going to fit exactly the same, and that's okay with me. Uh, it's definitely not going to fit exactly the same, but at the same time, um, you have those divots inside the actual panel that we're going to put on top of this. And since I don't have the uh, indents that's needed, I have the indents, I just don't have the outcroppings that's needed to fit perfectly, I'm going to make it smooth and then just like eye it out and make it level. So this way it's in the center of the panel, and it really doesn't make too much of a deal, uh, big deal. And you're going to see towards the end how Murder Fang in itself actually develops, and I'm actually quite happy with the way it came out. The only thing I did not change is actually the tilt of the Dreadnought. That's right, his waist. I did not do his waist because I never liked that tilted version. Like that particular version, the way Murder Fang is, doesn't drive me crazy. I did I've seen some conversions that are pretty sick. I'll tell you, even Primaris conversions of Murder Fang, which is pretty sick as well. But uh, as far as boxy dreads are concerned, I'm all right with the box. All right, now that I got one side all shaved down and ready to go, time to shave off the next side. I wonder if this is the part where I cut myself. Mm, I know, now you're furious, right? I do cut myself right there, but it's not bleeding, so that's not the cut I'm talking about. <laughs> oh boy, and look, I don't, the, the, the ironic and funny thing is, is that I don't learn my lesson and I keep going. It's just like I'm tempting fate. But you know, I don't know. There's something about being dangerous. I don't know. <laughs> Living recklessly while painting, while uh, creating miniatures and, and painting miniatures recklessly. Don't don't actually follow my advice. I don't know what I'm really talking about when it comes to uh, living recklessly with miniatures and cutting yourself. Don't cut yourself. Don't just don't cut yourself. All right. 
But I have to tell you, uh, getting over the fear of chopping into a mini was actually quite refreshing for me. This is the first time I hacked a mini. Like, truly hacked a mini. Uh, I did another Trash of Treasure, which was a Rhino, which I added bits to, and I guess I cut some pieces out. But, I don't know, I kind of... I feel like this uh, miniature I actually did a lot more cutting into as I'm getting used to chopping into miniatures. Oh man, I really did cut myself there. But it's not bleeding, so hey, that's good. This is not the cut I was mentioning. All right, so... Um, once you're done with that, you want to turn the blade over and just like scrape the top. It's just like one of those uh, mold line removers that you can get. Uh, in the back of your X-Acto blade works for me. I never had a problem with it. So I don't know. I have to try one of those mold remover lines and see if there's any real difference. Um, curious, but uh, I'm not as I'm not going to actually buy the GW one because it's too expensive. I'd rather get my minis get more minis because I need more stuff for my power shame that's how this works okay well right, let's see if it fits I want to get into the center I want to be able to reach into the wires with um, with my paintbrush that's a big thing that's a big okay for me okay moving on next up we need to fit the center piece now this is gonna be kind of tricky because here we have two pieces that are gonna fit into the center piece the first piece is going to be the face uh, insert that goes into the actual chest insert and they also have to be flat now most of the middle part is going to get covered so um, I just need to make sure that none of this stuff pops out beyond the level of where the bolts are on the outer rim if I everything underneath that that's fine that can stick in fact the bottom piece itself might show uh, might show through just a little bit because of the way the chest plate of murder fang is the bottom piece might actually show a little bit through so you don't want to cut all the way down here if you're doing the same type of conversion um because you want to leave that uh so you can you're able to paint it but most of the top piece anything that's poking through uh past again that uh border mark uh, around that uh carapace i guess <laughs> okay um you want to kind of clear out so we get into it and we dig into it and this is really simple like there wasn't much time that i didn't spend recording building this build this was a really quick conversion for me because um i just went so smoothly and it's so easy to do uh, so if you have like an old dread and you want to get it on ebay or something like that uh, or a friend has one from a Black Reach box set, and you happen to build a Bjorn already, but you have these pieces. One of these dreads are very inexpensive. You can pick one up. I think I've seen it for under 20 bucks. And you can pick one up and just like chop up and go to town. All right, now I'm trying to fit in the center to see where things are going to lay. And it seems like that works. See how the bottom piece pokes out, like I said? Yeah, so just be careful with that. We're going to scrape it, just make sure that it is these bolts down here were, were causing an issue, so I got rid of those bolts as well. Hey, bolts and rivets that you take off, you don't have to pin, you know, you don't have to actually pick out with highlights, so yay, I like that, you know. Less work, quicker built, newer model on the table that, you know, is to my standard, that's what I call it because I'm relentless, I'm relentless and I beat myself up until I get to a standard where I am happy and then I want to improve that. So, <laughs> All right, so this is the headpiece. This is the one I was talking about before. It's a little like, I don't know, it's like insert tab A into slot B. There is some definition back here. So, oh, this must be the part where I definitely cut myself. Because look at this, tiny little piece. Oh my goodness, right? Could happen now. <laughs> um, I wonder if I should title this video Just Guess When I'm Going to Cut Myself. No, no, no. no. It's from Trash to Treasure, of course. But look, I was quite uh, simple. Now, on the back of this head right here, it has an indent and it has a bulge. And the bulge is going to get in the way if you want to put it on front of the, the tread. So you have to make everything flat. 
Again, wanting to make everything flat so this way it can fit snug and fit onto the model. And all we're trying to do is actually impress this right on top of that model. And the scraping that we did before is gonna allow for adhesion. What that means is when you want to bond two plastic pieces together, you don't want paint to be in the middle because it's not as strong of a bond. So you kind of scrape the area just a little bit to scrape off the paint or remove the paint, the area that you want to actually bond together. And the strongest bond you're gonna get is plastic to plastic, especially when you're using uh, super glue. Now, if you're using um, if you're using any kind of let's say Tamiya plastic glue or something like that, something that'll melt the plastic, well, then you definitely want to plastic on plastic because it's not really gonna melt the paint. It's not gonna work. You know, so you have to have that plastic on plastic and it's just the best connection. So just make sure that if you are going to glue two pieces together, make sure that it's a plastic to plastic connection and that is the best way for you to go. All right, so now I'm fitting in that top piece into the chest plate and just checking out what it looks like. I think it looks great. I kind of want to dry fit it just to make sure that it's gonna go on evenly and that it's flat. So I'm gonna lay that in here. I'm gonna put this dread on top and then I'm gonna flip it over. See if it doesn't fall apart on me. Oh yeah, look, that looks great. I love it. All right, good job. I'm happy with that. So all I'm gonna do next is, um, I guess I could just attach all the pieces right there in one shot. Um, I'm, I'm happy with this. <laughs> all right, take the pieces off. Okay, so next up, what we're going to work on here are trying to get this off the base. Now, this is the hardest part for me. I don't know how to cut this, and I tried with a with a, a screwdriver. I, I tried with other kind of prying material, but I need to get this off. So it's time for exacto blade. Now, I have a jeweler saw, and I did not think to use it. So. This is my bad for whatever happens next, right? But this has to go. It just has to go. Now, at any point in time, that blade can come and bite me. So, you gotta watch out for that. Also, I might ruin the base. So, I don't want to ruin the base. So I try to actually pull this out from the bottom as well. Ah, this, uh, this base gave me so much trouble. I mean, I wonder... Has bases ever given you this much trouble to pull apart? Like how much glue is used in your base that when you wanted to pry it open? Oh, I did it! No, I didn't. I kind of broke that. <laughs> That's okay. I, I, if you've ever had a problem with trying to remove your mini from a base when you want to try to rebase, why don't you comment down below and let me know about your experience. That would be coolly interested to find out. Or if you want to write a super detailed response, you could also join uh, me and Ian and Corbin on the Miniatures Paintbrush Legion on Facebook if you're interested in joining that Facebook group right there. Uh, it's just a chill bunch of groups. Just if you're not chill, then, you know, don't need to apply. But, you know, I don't care about the numbers. I just, I care about the quality of people that come in, you know what I mean? And if you're a chill dude or do that, then feel free to join. Okay, let's see. Oh, there it is, folks. Yep, I cut myself. And nope. I did not put a band-aid. I just kept on going. So so I hope you're not totally grossed out by my blood. And apparently my head, which got into the shot, and I didn't realize. But I, said, I was like, I should really put a band-aid on that. I was thinking about it, and I was like, but I have to finish. But I have to finish. But I have to finish. So I just kept on going, you know. All right, time to take off the, uh, I guess, the shin pads. Yeah, the shin pads. Now, I was concerned that it might not fit, so what I did was, is exactly the same technique that I use for the chest plate and the side uh, shoulder plates, I guess, uh, for the top. The same concept was used here. I wanted a flat surface so the other piece can fit right on top, so I can glue right on top of it. So, in order to do that, what I have to do is just shop in there, and just yank pieces out. Yep. Just being fearless with this at this point. I mean, I try to be delicate, but still fearless. You know, I could cut out a whole bunch of things and a lot of things, bad things could happen. But I am not gonna live my life in fear. I am going to 
uh, move ahead and do the best that I can to uh, produce the best quality miniature that I feel I can, that I can feel on the table and have a lot of fun with and get the oohs and ahs if I possibly can. I mean, that, if somebody appreciates your work, it's validated and I just feel so, like, it's so worth it. All right, now we're gonna shave off some pieces just to make sure that it's nice and flat. And that's not good. Okay, so I'll just suck that and keep going. Ah, go, blood for the blood guy. Okay, now. <laughs> Sorry about uh, the pressure that I'm putting on. I kinda opened up my cut there. I was putting on pressure. I really should put a Band-Aid on that. I have to forewarn you that I did not put a Band-Aid. I don't think I put a Band-Aid on that the entire time uh, until I finished the project which most of this project was actually done in real time. So it really didn't take me too long. Like I had a vision, I knew what I was going to do with it. And I just pretty much, that pretty much filmed it just about live. It took me one session, one sit down, one done, once and done. The conversion actually was pretty easy to do. Uh, so if you do have, again, if you want to, uh, convert your own it is super simple to do uh, I do not recommend cutting yourself at all so no it actually kind of hurt okay all right time to put on the uh, shin guards I guess you want to call them the shin guard sounds like a troop an elite troop hi we're the shin guard we're gonna come protect your shins what? all right so this shin piece has some uh, holes slot B's I like to call them because insert tab A into slot B they have slot B's in there and you got to remove that in order to like, fit flatly onto the shin guard piece so you got to go in there and what I do is I just snip 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 all around and then just pull off pieces and chunks until I feel like it's even and that's the only way you can get to those pieces right there so and that's that and I'm going to do the other one as well and just cutting through. See how I'm cutting through at like a 45 degree angle and then coming into the 180 stance and just going along there. Uh, and that's that's how I got rid of that issue with the shin guards uh, uh, for, because if I didn't get rid of these, they would poke out too far and they just look like I glued them on top of there and I didn't even care. But no, I want to make it look even. I wanted to make it fit well. And I have to tell you, when it comes to converting minis, it's just as much as an art as painting the minis, in my opinion. Because in a way, you're kind of sculpting or using pre-sculpts in order to create your own thing, which is amazing. And sculpting is just, oh, it is such an art to do something on this scale. So all aspects of the heart, a hobby are art. And I do call it art. Some people say, well, this isn't art. You're just playing, uh, painting little toys. But, you know, honestly, if you go to MoMA and you see like, you know, two by fours put together called art and uh, I don't know, broken dishes on the floor or something, I don't know, call that art. If you can do something like that and call it art, I'm not, I'm not putting them down or anything. That's their thing. But if that's called art, then this is called art too. That's it. That's all I'm saying. I'm trying to validate the hobby making it into artwork because there's so much time, love, and passion spent into this. And the creation of itself, the colors, the blending, and everything else, using the paint, we're using all the artists' tools to create something. Why can't it be art? So anybody who says this uh, miniature painting isn't art, well, all I have to say is that's all I have to say. You get a razzleberry. Okay. So now time for a dry fit. Now it's really important to dry fit your models. And when you dry fit your models is when you put the piece where you think it might go without any glue, just to make sure that it looks right. Now some people just put some poster tack, uh, Loctite, I like the blue Loctite poster tack. Uh, I think that's the best I recommend for anyone. And um, there was a piece that wasn't fitting. So I actually cut some of the shin guard off just so it can fit. That's right, just a little square off. And that's all it needs. And that's because the wires in the bottom didn't fit right. Be aware of how you do that. Uh, and be aware which side you want each uh, shin guard to go. I happen to want it in this pattern. So that's what I did. I, I took one and then uh, I put that design on the left, the, uh, the skulls. That's the way I wanted it because you're gonna have to cut an indent on there. Okay, so now time to put it all together. Now is the fun part, right? All right, so you just gotta throw that shin guard in and, and making sure that that's all dry before we make sure we get the next one done, just to see how it looks. All right, 
I'll bore you with putting that together and watching Glee Drive. It's time for the fists. All right, I'm gonna put the fist together as well. I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave it on subassembly or not. Uh, I do have a lot of subassembly pieces. Uh, I think the fists are not subassembled, but the claws are, and I'm gonna keep them off into a subassembly so I can put them on as well. But uh, for the purpose of this video, I did poster attack most of it, and I found the jeweler saw. That's right, I could have protected my fingers with this jeweler saw, but no, I didn't chose to cut into my fingers. Good thing is, is that I stopped bleeding, so that's great. Still no band-aid though. All right, so that might open up at any time. Sorry if I grossed you out. It's just what happens uh, sometimes when you're miniature painting. Okay, time to saw this cloth, because we don't need no stinking claws. I mean, maybe Santa, but all right. Um, I like to drill out. That's right, I drill out my gun barrels. Guys, girls, drill out your, your gun barrels. Like seriously, drill them out. They look so fake. You can have a coolest looking model and then you don't have the drilled out gun barrels and it just looks fake, it looks so fake. So, a little pin vise, look, it really doesn't take much. That's it, done. Um, I, I have used Dremel tools before, but you know, I think I'm part insane, but. <laughs> And I think that's part of eating paint. I don't know. It could be. Could be. Just wake that paintbrush off right into the mouth and make me loco in la cabeza. All right. <laughs> Time to put on that claw onto that uh, dreadnought. Really dreadnought. And um, we're really uh, coming through somewhat of the home stretch because here we have uh, the main portion of Mur Murder Fern. I don't think I can say it any another way, right? It's just murder farm. I love it. I love it. It's so kooky. I love it. All right, so we have some clowels there. Santa not included. Um, and we're gonna glue uh, most of the pieces together, so this way uh, we're not worried about you know any kind of subassemblies when it comes to the chest piece or anything like that. I don't want to paint over the scraped out bits. I want to have a plastic to plastic connection. I don't want to have it like if it needed any kind of putty or anything like that. I didn't want a chance that uh, it would need it. I would like to take care of it at this stage. Or if not, you know, I can always use, if there's like micro gaps, I can always use gloss varnish or matte varnish in order to fill those in, no problem. But I'm gonna have to paint them up first. So I'm gonna play around with that. That's a first for me as well. So chopping into the miniature, pretty much a first for me. And using gloss medium to cover up gaps is gonna be a first for me as well. So, so there it is. The fist is on, and that left fist right there, that left arm, I don't think I'm gonna glue it, because I can actually put it in so many positions, because you don't have to glue it. There you go. But this side you do have to glue, because the actual uh, piece that sticks out does not fit in that hole. That hole is way too big for that piece. That's because it wasn't meant for it. But hey, you know what? That's okay. I like it on the side like that, so I'm gonna keep it on the side like that and forever. Okay, time to glue together the centerpiece there with the face and watch it come alive. It's just coming alive here. I think it's so cool. Murder fur. All right, can't, can't get enough of that. Can't get enough of murder fang. I gotta do some murder fang. All right. Murder fang is the name of this miniature, if you haven't guessed by now. Um, and if you don't know who Murder Fang is, come play me at 40k. If I get him close, I can show you what he can do. <laughs> that would be fun. Especially with Bjorn and his, uh, his claw coming through in the background, too. Mmm, just some hacking up and slashing goodness. Oh, no. All right, so again, the same premise here is actually cutting apart or, or actually scraping off the paint so I can do the shoulder pauldron now originally this shoulder pauldron comes with uh, fur that goes completely around I wasn't keen on the idea because the fur didn't actually line up with that shoulder pad for this dread so I knew I had to do some kind of conversions going on here uh, and I think the conversion was tasteful without being wasteful all right um, so what I did was is that I put a little uh, symbol in the front 
a Space Wolf symbol in the front, and then I put one on the side as well. I really wanted to cut this free so this way it could fit nice and flat. This is the time to do that. Again, cutting towards myself, adding pressure. I never learned my lesson, it seems. Right? Like, how many times did I spill over washes and I told everybody to put some post attack on the bottom of the, of the wash and it won't fall over? How many times I follow my own advice? You know, I really stinks. I really should. <laughs> anyway, all right, time to put on this symbol. So you see, I wanted to make that wolf symbol with the skull and the wolf, like half wolf, half skull. I love that symbol. And I'm going to put it around right there. I think it looks great right there. And um, I do want to put some fur on as well. I just want to make sure that it's straight. I do want to put some fur on as well. So I, I actually take some fur that used, would be for the loin cloth. I actually put some fur on the side. Now I got to make sure that the clearance of it is great. Yep, the diamond piece fits perfectly. The diamond wolf piece fits. And I'm going to take that, uh, what I usually put in for a loin cloth. Uh, I'm actually going to put it as a shoulder pad. Uh, hopefully it was never used by another space wolf before. These things actually have tabs on it, so I'm going to get rid of the tabs. Right there. Again, making it flat just like everything else. The theory here is that you want to make it flat so this way it goes flush on. Now, when you make it flat like this, you do have to adjust it cut quite quickly uh, so this way it can set into place and you have to be straight with it. Like, if if it's not straight, rip it off and start over, man. Just start over until you get it right. You have to just get it right the first time. You got to get it level. It has to look right from a distance as well as close up. So whenever you glue anything into place like this, just make sure it's straight and it's on and it's even and it's centered. Because once the, dribble, the glue dries, it's a hokey nightmare to get it all together again. All right. So now dry fit over here just to make sure that it looks cool. Yeah, I like it. I really like it. Alrighty, so that's that being that. I'm gonna get some push attack. I'm gonna get some push attack just so I can make sure I know what it looks like. I'll place that push attack uh, onto the shoulder pad and let's see if we can get a fur in there. See what that looks like. And that's what I'm saying. I really like these mounting things. That is not helping my example right there. I really like these mounting uh, squares, these Loctite mounting squares. They're so good. They're just so good. Look at that. That looks cool. I don't think I glued, glued this one together because uh, it's fur and I wanted to do fur. Um, I want to do fur uh, the right way. And to do fur the right way, I have to build it in uh, sub assemblies because you got to love the fur. Especially when you have space wolf fur, um, uh, or fur. fur. Fur is a better way to say, uh, in my opinion, at least in English. All right. The reason why anybody would say fur is because the U sounds like ooh in Spanish. So if you speak Spanish, you say f ooh, r right? There you go. A little Spanish lesson here too. That's right. I mean, hey, that's my day job anyway, right? <laughs> Alrighty. So now time to take up some iconography in the back. I want to add some space wolf iconography here in the back. And what I'm doing is putting a touch there and just adding a space wolf uh, skull onto it. Now you can add anything you want. I like the skull, so I'm going to put that together right there. Uh, so I have that all done. I'm drilling out the, the stacks the smokestacks on the back because you have to drill it out and don't just stop with a little bit go right through on this sucker because it's kind of hollow in the end uh so you kind of want to go all the way he can't go all the way see how it just goes all the way yeah no problem that gives it a bit of realism all right so drill out your smokestacks drill out your gun barrels now you're gonna want a thicker drill bit in order to get the small stacks than you do, you want your pistols. But that's okay. Go up the great range. Go go to your Lowe's or Home Depot or any kind of big box store and get yourself a drill set. I mean, it's so worth it. And pin vices from your hobby store. And that helps too. <laughs> All right, we're getting really close to the end of this. Uh, I think I'm going to blue tack. Uh, once I'm done drilling out here, I'm going to blue tack the rest of the piece just so I can give you an idea of what it looks like before I put it into sub assemblies. Right. <laughs> So, look at that, it looks great. I really do. I, I can't wait to paint this. 
I'm like excited about this. It's amazing. <laughs> right. Alrighty, now to put on all the accoutrement with some uh, some poster tack. A lot of poster tack. Alright, so poster tacking this sucker here for the claws. Whoop! Oh, my clumsy self. I'm so clumsy. I don't know why I'm a miniature painter. I drop everything about 15 times. Alright, now that actually kind of moves up and down, so that looks great. And the other fang is on as well. Look at that. Look at that. That is amazing. Oh man, murder fang. I love it. I love it. I'm so happy. All right. Um, this is this miniature is done. Catch you on the outro. Well, there it is, all built up with some blood, sweat, and tears in it. I'm not joking there. <laughs> well, if y'all like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush. <laughs>